Hi, I'm David Furman, and today I'm going to talk about portable backup strategies. My quest for a, a, a portable backup solution goes back uh, three or four years ago when we started doing long distance walks, um, and I just wanted a method that would be able to back up the uh, SD cards from my Olympus camera uh, onto a, a flash card or, or some sort of drive um, that's a, a rugged drive that then could be put in a different location, my backpack, uh, so that if we did get separated, if one got lost or what have you, then I would have a backup copy when I got home of all, all those pictures that I had taken while I was on, on my trip. Uh, three years ago, or four years ago probably, it all started with the Kingston Mobile Light, which is a pretty nice unit. Uh, the trouble is, um, I, I found that it was unreliable in, in backing up my files. Uh, it would sometimes just uh, quit or freeze uh, mid-backup, so got pretty frustrated at that, and I just had to leave that aside. Uh, the next thing I got, and this is again probably two years ago now, and I have been using this in the field for a bit, is the ver verbatim media share. Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, the weak link in this has probably been the software all along, and more recently, um, it took a long time for verbatim to upgrade uh, the media share software, uh, the media share app. Uh, to ISO 11 and, and in addition to that I had also problems with just uh, uh, transferring files from uh, either a, a USB card or a flash drive that was plugged into this to my camera and it took after about two months of going very slow glacial speed back and forth with uh, verbatim uh, support I really got no answers. I got pretty frustrated with that then so that led me to another device and that's the the file hub, Ralph Power file hub. So what I plan to do is compare these two devices, the uh, the verbatim and the file hub. Now, they're both very similar units. Uh, it, what they do is they, they have a little inputs here for your SD card. You plug it in right there. Uh, on this side in the file hub, there is a, a little connector where you can plug in uh, a USB device, uh, it could be a USB flash card uh, such as this, just plugs right in there like that. Uh, and again, there's your SD card that plugs in the other side in this one, like that. Um, just turn it on and, uh, and you set up a Wi-Fi network with your, with your iPad and you're, you're good to go as far as backup and, and, uh, and transferring files to your iPad are concerned. Uh, this unit also, the file hub, also has a, a connection to a, a to a wired network in a, in a, for example, if you're in a hotel, um, I, there's still a few hotels I found that don't have Wi-Fi, uh, they just have a wired uh, connection, this will allow you to connect to those and then what happens is once it's connected then this unit connect as a, as a basically a travel router and will act as a wireless connector to all of your uh, devices that you have in your in your motel room for example or hotel room uh, to other iPhones, to other iPads, um, whatever you might have so, so it, it becomes quite Quite functional in that way so yes the the uh, the LAN connector is not essential but it does help for those for uh, those uh, few really old-fashioned types of uh, accommodations that you might, might run across and I have run across a couple by the way so that's how it works both the file hub and the media share are designed to work with a an app that you can download for free uh, through the uh, App Store, for example, on on an uh, on a Mac uh, Apple device uh, to your iPad or iPhone, uh, and then it connects the File Hub connects to that app with uh, Wi-Fi. Actually, it connects to to your um, iPad or iPhone with with Wi-Fi, and then and then you use the app from there basically to control the actions that are happening um, with the with the file hub or or the media share. So both this, the file hub and the media share uh, can be set up as a Wi-Fi bridge. Uh, what it does is, is it will connect to a local um, Wi-Fi network. For example, if you're in a hotel, the local uh, hotel Wi-Fi network, and that's done controlled by the app on your iPad. Uh, that then allows um, other devices in the room to 
connect uh, using this device to uh, to the hotel network. If you're in a hotel that has a, a weak or a wonky Wi-Fi network, and we, we all know that there's lots of those kinds of places, uh, you could possibly place this unit where the signal is strongest, perhaps by the uh, by the hotel door, for example. Sometimes it's in the bathroom. Sometimes it's even by the by the window. Some place where the signal is strongest, uh, so that then that acts as basically a bridge, at which you have which then you can use on your bed or at a desk or something a little bit more inside of your motel room place a little bit more comfortable so you don't have to sit sit by the door of the hotel anyway so that's just a nice little feature um, another feature that I, I'm not going to talk about and that's true with both of these devices they can both stream audio and video uh, to your to your iPad so you can actually store movies on on USB cards and then stream them to your to your iPad so you can watch them later on but uh, I'll let you delve into that if you choose to purchase either of these devices. And I forgot to mention a very important feature of both of these units and that is they have a built-in battery that you can use to charge your devices. In the case of the File Hub it has a 6000 mAh battery and the Verbatim unit has a 3000 mAh battery. Very important features. Okay, now let's take a look at how these units actually work. So here's how the process works when you're backing up using the File Hub right here and the File Hub Plus app. Um, I've already downloaded the app, of course, and installed it, and I've already selected uh, the File Hub uh, from my network in, in settings. Uh, so that's all set up. You can see here the, the, the green Wi-Fi signal. Uh, I've also inserted my USB stick into the file hub and also uh, my SD card into it as well. So I've got my pictures from my camera and a blank SD card. And you can see here by the, I hope you can see it anyways, uh, that the, uh, the green Wi-Fi signal right here indicates that it's, it is connected. Uh, the little green power light right here will tell you when it, if it starts to pulse that it's actually doing something and it's down uh, 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 backing up files. Uh, there, there are four LEDs right here which indicate battery strength as well. Anyways, this is the main, uh, the home screen of the USB Plus app. Uh, as I said, it does, there's the Wi-Fi signal. Uh, it does, does tell you that I've got it set up in bridge mode, so it is connected also to my my uh, home uh, network as well. So I could, while all this is going on, still access the internet and get my email and what have you. It's not just connected to the, to the uh, route power itself. Uh, there's little icons right here, one indicating that an SD card is inserted and that there's a USB drive of some sort attached as well. And that's that, pretty much. Uh, these things are pretty much of use if you're doing streaming. I'm not going to talk about that. Systems is where you'd go to to set up, a, of course, all your all your, the systems, uh, including setting up uh, your your bridge Wi-Fi as well. So I'll, I won't talk about that right now. We'll just go straight into uh, doing a backup. So we just touch the file folders. You can see right here we have the SD card volume and the USB card volume set up. Let's click on the SD card to start with, uh, and we'll find my image files. Uh, we're just going to choose one of the folders right here, and there's quite a few pictures on here. Now, one thing you have to realize that when uh, before you start the download process is that what's happened here is it's only downloaded about uh, the first 100 to 200. I think it depends on the, the file size, so the number of slides that are actually short loaded uh, initially will will vary but let's assume 100 to 200 you can see there's a very small uh, uh, thumbnail uh, uh, images right here showing showing what the JPEGs are like there is no way of viewing um, uh, of viewing uh, your raw files these are my uh, Olympus ORF raw files uh, however there is also information about the size of the file and the date it was taken right down to the right down to the minute so that's all you're useful. So I'll show you, here's the JPEG, by the way. It does show you uh, a full-size uh, preview, which is really quite nice. Uh, and But if you try to click on a raw file, 
you just get there's no installed application to open this file. So anyways, let's get back to that. We're, I was talking about it's only loaded about 100 to 200 files. If you want to load all the files, what you have to do is you have to go down to the bottom and it says loading there and it'll load another 100 to 200 and it says and just keep pulling up like that. It's hard to catch the message but it does say pull up to load more more uh, images. Uh, what you have to do is keep doing that until it's completely loaded everything and I'm going to do that right now. So I've loaded all my pictures right here. You can see down below that it says that all data has been loaded. Uh, so I, I have all the pictures on my card there and are now loaded into to, to the app itself. Once you've got them all loaded, then you hit select and then select all and it will they put little tags beside each of, each of these files. And then what you want to hit is then copy to and up here, this is a little tricky part, you have to, uh, it looks like these are just your internal storage on your I iPad. You want to hit internal storage and select external storage instead from the drop down menu. And then go back to your USB volume 2, select that. If you want to, you can set up a, a folder to put all your images in. Let's do that. And I'll just call it um, file, file hub 1. Okay, so hit OK, uh, then hit the file hub again to get into it. Uh, it doesn't tell you the name of the folder, it still just says external storage up there. Uh, and then down here uh, it says paste. So we really this is a copy and a paste operation. Uh, so you, what you do is you hit paste and uh, it has a, a, a small period where it's loading all the pictures into, the, um, into this window. And we'll just give that a couple of seconds. Okay, so there we have it. The, uh, the files have all now loaded and the transfer has started. And you can see here there's, there's three columns up here. One is transferring and the other one transfer completed and transfer failed. Now, this is again where the media share is, is, is better. Uh, it would have little numbers beside each of these columns so that you would know um, how many files still have to be transferred and the number of files that have been completed. So it, it lets you know where, where things are happening in the process. Um, unfortunately with the file hub it doesn't give you that information so you just have to just have to wait more or less uh, until until it gets until it all gets done. Um, you can't see it right now but I, there is a uh, the uh, this Sony uh, USB stick uh, will flash uh, so I know that there is some action happening there and the uh, power button on the route power uh, file hub is also pulsing so I know there's there's some activity happening also right here you can follow uh, the the files all the files are listed in order right here uh, and it's the top one that is being uh, transferred first so you can watch it being transferred and you can see the numbers changing so there's at least some indication that that the, the, the transfer is occurring it's just that you don't really get a sense of whether you've transferred uh, the 1,000 of 5,000 uh, files or, or, or what where you stand in the whole situation Anyways, I know that uh, we're not going to watch this finish, but I know it will take about uh, four hours to to totally upload uh, all of, all of these images to from my SD card to my um, USB flash drive right here. Part of the problem, part of the reason for the slowness, I think, is the fact that the uh, USB uh, is is just it's just USB two. It's not USB three, and that's the same actually with the MediaShare as well, and even the older Kingston model. Uh, I'm not aware of any of, of these types of devices that have uh, USB built in yet. So uh, that's something to come, and I hope it'll come soon because I'm sure it would speed up the process quite a bit. In the meantime.
the idea is you can just leave this um, to run perhaps in the evening while you're in your motel room at night or hotel room uh, let it let it upload and uh, even go to bed and wake up in the morning and it should be it should be completed uh, when it is completed you'll you, you everything will will then appear in the transfer complete file and then hopefully nothing will appear in your transfer fail failed uh, 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 column Okay, so we backed up our pictures. Let's say we wanted to do some, some editing, uh, and probably I would be doing my editing first. I'd be selecting pictures to edit before I started the backup process. So uh, anyway, so that what I would do is uh, I would go to my, again, my file folder, and I can either select the images from my USB disk if I've already backed up, or from the SD card. Let's go to the SD card right here. That will select one of my, folders here of images and let's say I want to let's say I want to upload a, a JPEG there's one right there um, that's what it looks like and you can scan quite easily back and forth uh, between the images right here and it just takes a little time for them to load so you get a pretty good idea of what the images are like and let's say I wanted to uh, download this one to my uh, this JPEG to my uh, to my iPad, just hit that, and it will. Sometimes you have to hit it twice for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay, there we go. Here we go. So it brings up the uh, your share menu, and so the choices I have here is that uh, it will copy to Lightroom CC directly if that's what. The, and I like working in Lightroom, so that's fantastic. Or you can click Save Image, and Save Image will will just copy that image to, to my camera roll on on the iPad. So there's two options right there. Now let's say I like this image, and I wanted to actually work in, the, in with a RAW file on it, and that would be working with a RAW file um, in in Lightroom. So what I would do is take just take a note of the file number one three seven two, for example. Go back to my list, uh, and there's one three. 1372 right here uh, and I would hit select and select the raw file there okay so let's say I wanted to copy this raw image to uh, to Lightroom uh, what I would do is I would click the share button right here and again it will load up my menu of options there we are so the choices are I could save the image uh, to my uh, to my camera roll and then transfer it to another application, for example, like I, like Lightroom, or I could transfer it directly to Lightroom right here. And to do that, all I have to do is hit on the Lightroom icon. It will open up Lightroom. It's going to load the photo. There we are. It actually loads it right in, right in the editing position. So I'm ready to do all the work I need to do on uh, on that uh, on that image. Pretty neat, I think. If I was in the MediaShare app, a lot of these options would not be there, including Lightroom. There is no Lightroom option in in the the, the file in the MediaShare Share app. So. There's no way of uploading a JPEG or a RAW file uh, to Lightroom directly. The other thing is that, strangely, there is no save image in in the uh, you know in the in the sharing menu. So there's a lot of similarities between these two units. Uh, the file hub weighs 142 grams. The media share is slightly lighter, 110 grams. In both cases, that's pretty pretty light, um, an insignificant weight, if you will. Uh, the file hub is slightly more expensive at $50 Canadian. Um, the the uh, verbatim media share uh, can be had for about $32 in, in Staples in Canada, for example. Uh, the battery, of course, in the file hub is considerably bigger. It's double the size. It's 600 mAh, and this one's just uh, 3,000 mAh. So that's a little bit of difference if that's important to you. Uh, uh, where the verbatim shines, of course, is that it has all that uh, feedback information during the backup process. It'll show you the number of pictures that you've actually loaded into the, into the file hub um, app. It shows you 
the number of files that are have still have to be transferred, the number of files that have been transferred, and the number of files that have failed to transfer, and that's on an ongoing basis as the as the backup process is going on. So so that's where it really shines. So if you were just using if you just needed a device strictly for backup, then maybe the verbatim is the way to go. Uh, it, it, it will certainly solve all those problems. But if you wanted to do editing of your pictures, then that's where I would probably prefer the, the file hub unit. Um, I know that's what I prefer really. Um, strictly because it offers more options for getting photos from this device onto my iPad. You know, I can transfer fairly easy raw files or JPEGs to the iPad, to the camera roll, and it also works uh, pretty pretty tightly with uh, Lightroom CC on the iPad and, and allowing me to both upload raw files and JPEG files directly to it. So that's a pretty useful feature, I think, and sort of tips the scale in favor of the of the file hub uh, for, my, for my particular purposes. And I'll just have to live with the fact that, that uh, you know, I've loaded all the pictures and that at the end of the process, um, I'll just have to wait till the end of the, of the upload process to find out if it's been completely successful successful or not. Oops, looks like I cut myself off. Oh well, this was been a, has been a little bit of a long one. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe and like this YouTube video. Uh, I would also encourage you to visit my blog site, which is walkclickmake.com. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.